the top raw vet in Chile, Christian Vergara, here with us, but the technology let us down. I was gutted to say the least. Um, but he's come back. He's the busiest man in Chile as well, by the sounds of it. But he's come back to spend half an hour with us talking about uh, how things are in South America and in Chile, and also about the microbiome, which is, is his big thing. Now, before we start, and before somebody like Sasha says something, uh, I was shaving the other day. I was in a hurry, and I cut myself, right, just there. And I was so irritated. <laughs> Christian would be laughing. He'd be laughing. It's just because I'll get – they'll give me such a <laughs> time for this. I'm just trying to get in there early. So I cut myself there, and I was so irritated that I cut myself there because I was knew I was coming on – on here the next day that I then went and cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. <laughs> so before you say anything, that's what's that's that's what's I haven't been I don't know running after parked cars or anything like that. Let me bring in my friend Christian Vergara. Christian, how are you? Hi Nick. Uh, great. Um great uh, here being with you. It's how are you? <laughs> it's great. I mean, it's. I mean, the technology is so amazing. You guys are over there in Chile. So how far is that? Must be six, eight thousand miles away. And here we are having a conversation. I'm still trying to get my head around it. You know, maybe I'm showing my age, but it, it still blows me away. This whole thing, the whole technology. But it's great, you know, because otherwise I only ever see you at conferences once a year or something. And so um, I think there's a lot of good stuff has come out of the whole the whole COVID as well as disastrous stuff. So listen, tell us tell us about you. Tell us uh, who you are, what you do, and where you do it. Just a little bit of background so that we get a, a flavor of, 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 of you. If, if you don't mind, please. In a few words, um, I've been working as a veterinary since 2009. And as a regular veterinary, you know, working in, clini in clinics, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. now I am working as a, trying to do my best as a nutritionist, working with diet, raw diet since I think um, I started in a professional way seven years ago, and I started to travel along my country and to give some speech about the raw diet. At the first, was so difficult, you know. I yeah, was trying, yeah. Yeah. you know, when you try to do something new in medicine, they look at you. Hey, yeah, they raise you. Yeah. Yeah. You are the new anti-vaccine guy. <laughs> because you are teaching the raw food, so it was pretty hard at the beginning. Um, well, well, after that, and that because in 2016, I think, the show Petful, you know, it started to show in Netflix, and it was a wake-up call for people. Oh, okay, Petful. Yeah. Yes. Petful, so they started, is it real? This bag of skill is doing that to my pet? Everybody started to, 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 when I went to give some speech in conference, uh, people said, uh, did you watch the, the Petful documentary? Yeah. 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 Is it real? Yeah. So what do I do? Try to do, try to make a diet or look for better alternatives yeah. to feed your pet. But how? My veterinarian says that uh, if my dog don't eat the kibble, my dog will die. And that's a philosophy of many veterinarians around the world. It's not only in Chile. Yeah. So then, okay, I started to, to teach my colleagues about raw food, the basis, the yeah. science basis. Because it's not only, oh, okay, you, you can give raw food to your dog and your dog will, will be good, but, or will be healthy. It's not like that. It's not just give raw meat and that's all. No, it's, it's there's a lot of things that you have to know before to start a, a balanced diet in your pet. And here I am now. And I 
here in Chile, I between capacitate like 80 veterinarians about in real food. Now they show their patients, they are working so well with this diet, but the industry is still working on decimate this diet because you know, bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. Dogs are dying because uh, aflatoxins in USA, unfortunately here in Chile, cats are dying from, uh, I think there's a uh, intoxication about the premix. Just like happened with hills with the toxicosis of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Here in Chile, they are still investigating what's going on with cats, but cats are dying. But the premise here is bacteria, 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 bacteria. Yeah, for sure. So five years ago in Chile, uh, there weren't many raw feeding vets at all. Is that is that about right? And now there's maybe 80 or 100 perhaps? Okay. We are a lot of veterinarians that, that we are practicing the raw food, and one of them are, are members of the RFPS. Right. And, and I'm happy to say that not only in Chile, we are gathering all the vets, the many of the vets who practice raw feeding in Latin America, uh -huh. and they are creating a kind of association of nutritionists, right. just like RFPS, but an Hispanic movement of veterinarians right. from Argentina, from Peru, from Colombia, Venezuela, um, even Spain. So it, it, it's really good to see that. And they are sharing knowledge about this. That is amazing. I can't wait to come to one of your conferences. I imagine that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. I, I remember the, the, the first time we talked, it, it was like that uh, two years ago when I wanted to be part of the RFPS. I mean, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And now I'm pleased to say Christian is the, uh, uh, the junior vice president, which means uh, after Neus, Neus Candela is our first woman president and our first Spanish-speaking president. She's from Spain. And our, uh, our second Spanish-speaking president will be Christian. He's a very active and very passionate and drives the message ar around the world very, very, uh, very well, especially in the uh, Spanish-speaking world. So we're very, very lucky to have him uh, on the committee and to be the, the president next year. So we're really looking forward to that at the RFVS. In fact, with NEOS, we are doing a lot of things that we are going to show it the next year. And, you know, um, I send you a little video, a short video, yeah. and for the microbiome stuff I'm creating yeah. for the members, and some videos for the public audience and videos for the members with more technical stuff and showing papers. We are participating more. That's the thing that we lack of right now. But uh, let's hope uh, that everything will change next year to uh, expand this, uh, I don't know how to say it's movement, but it's expand the, the way to expand the life of our dogs through that. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's everything, isn't it? It is the foundation, without a doubt. You know, species appropriate found, uh, nutrition, it's the foundation. It has to be why we didn't get this earlier. I don't know. So listen, tell me about uh, how you were taught nutrition at vet college. I think the, it's the very same thing that happened all around the, all the vets in the school in the world. Uh, last, uh, for example, in my case, and and I think I can talk about all the universities here in Chile. The, the senior year, the last year of the university, you know, the big companies go there to visit you and, mm -hmm. and show in their products. And that's all the nutrition course that you need to know because the nutrition that we are taught in, in university is about how to calculate the, the grass or the or for animal production for sheep, for cows, for horses, but for dogs, no, why are you wasting your time? You can go to the supermarket, you can go to the store and you can buy uh, the kibble that you that your mom, that you can allow to buy it. So you have the since the normal kibble 
to super hyper mega double premium uh, yeah. people yeah. from the, from yeah, Mars super no, from, from from another new new universe that, that you cannot yeah. tell chemically from the cheap stuff <laughs> It's it's sadly that it's true. It's true because uh, and, and I don't I don't blame them for that because I try to be in a middle way of everything because I know I I, I predicate I do know that uh, nutrition is the fundamental uh, pillar of life. But what about people who cannot afford uh, a good diet for dogs not every country have the same economic situation yeah so um and some people you know okay if you don't have the money don't have a dog okay that's that's obvious but in some country there is no uh culture about uh new to win dogs we we see a straight dog everywhere so what people can do good people okay there is a straight bitch who is uh, having puppies, so, so what are they going to do with the puppies? Okay, I can take the puppies. I, 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 I give them shelter, but I can afford to give them a raw diet or buy a uh, uh, super, hyper, mega, super, duper premium food. So I have to give them a regular food. So yeah. it, it, it's so hard for me to, in that case, so, okay, say, okay, you are not allowed or you cannot afford this yeah. kind of diet, but for, but at least you can supplement this diet. For example, omega three probiotics, even yogurt, yeah. sauerkraut, fermented foods. You sure can that. do that. It, it is cheap. It's so cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but that's the 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 scare. Some bets scare about that because if your dog eat yogurt, your dog it is lactose intolerant. Uh -huh. All dogs are lactose intolerant. Well. So, so that's why I try to only, that, um, like I said, I worry about my clients because this fight will be forever. The uh, kibble versus natural or raw diet, etc. It's an endless fight, and you know that. Sure, and yeah, it's not worth banging your head against the wall because they won't listen. You know that none are so deaf as those who won't listen. I guess because I need studies. Yeah, the I studies can give you food because you need a study. There is no scientific proof that raw diet is good for dogs. There you have one. There we have the studies from Anna Hill Bergman of the dog race, and we have some studies about microbiome, atopic dermatitis in dogs. But I don't know what proof, what more proof they want, because I don't, I haven't seen any proof about, for example, if that pedigree or putting a dog chow is good for dogs. Where is it? Yeah. Where are the papers? Because the trial for six months of eight months that FKO, uh, AFCO uh, creates for to approve uh, a food, you can see some, you you are not you cannot see a real uh, I forgot the word because that's me that's me idioma tu sabes. <laughs> You can uh, you can not see results in just six months. You can see yes, yes. you cannot see uh, effects of the food in just six months. Yeah. You so, can't see negative effects in six months. Yeah, you don't age in six months. Yeah, you don't get degenerative disease disease in six months usually. Tell us about your 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 favorite uh, your favorite case, the case that really stands out in your mind that that's that was uh, a real eye opener for you. Allergy. Okay, tell us about that. Which, have you got one I don't case? Know. Case? All my cases are from allergy and uh, bowel, in, bowel disease. Yeah. But most cases are from allergy because everybody thinks that chicken is the problem. And sometimes uh, people are looking for some kibble with no chicken because their dogs are allergic to chicken. And then after treatment, their diet uh -huh. is raw chicken. <laughs> so is really chicken the problem? Are the ingredients 
of kibble may be the problem or are many other things because sometimes it's gluten. For me, gluten, it's uh, one of the triggers of um, uh, chronic diseases, dogs, just like in humans. So okay. avoiding gluten, I, I in, in my cases, in, in my experience, avoiding gluten or sometimes some carbohydrates like rice, uh, the problem is solved. Yeah, yeah. In, in about, for example, the then gastrointestinal diseases, I start with the cooked diet and then we finish with raw to uh, recapacitate the microbiota because there is the problem, the dysbiosis, the, these bacteria are hungry because they are not eating. So there is a big problem inside the gut and after working with that, after repairing the gut, we can start trying giving another type of food. But, but the traditional medicine is antibiotics, uh, change protein, um, novel proteins like kangaroo, I don't know, uh, duck. Yeah. And ducks, uh, and sometimes dogs are still ill, even hydrolyzed, uh, analogenic, and dogs are still with diarrhea, with vomiting. Um, sometimes with autoimmune disease like uh, lymphocytary, plasmocytary, in, in, inflammatory intestinal disease, yeah. and they are eating. It took for me it took one year to get them healthy. Yeah, they went. They were they they visit the clinic two times a week for three years. Wow, for three years, two times a week, antibiotics. Um, drugs for the vomiting antimetics uh, mm. change uh, change of diet they were eating hydrolyzed uh, diet and they're still vomiting and now it took me a year with sauerkraut kefir turkey cooked turkey now they're they are eating a raw food a barf diet standard of mm. turkey and they have no problems okay in fact in fact, they are not visiting the clinic anymore, one year and a half, and the clinic called them because, hey, uh, uh, are your dogs okay? Yeah, they are good. What are they eating? Raw food? Oh, no, your dog will die. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really? It's such a crazy yeah. world. You're, you're obviously uh, very passionate about the microbiome. Tell us about how, uh, uh, tell us about what are, what are the new areas within the microbiome? We all realize that the microbiome is very important and it's linked to our brain and it therefore it affects behavior and affects your immunity and everything. Tell us everything. Tell us what, what are your new what are the new thoughts that because you're doing a you're doing a, a behavior seminar on, on Sunday, is that right? Yeah, on Sunday. Uh, indeed, What's I want to talk about the relation between tryptophan, serotonin and behavior and the microbiome. Okay, go for it. Give us a little uh, uh, encapsulate, a small version, if you would, please. Yeah. Everybody think or link the relationship between behavior, tryptophan, and serotonin, and that's good. Okay, but that reaction, the reaction of the tryptophan to serotonin, it's only the five percent of all the tryptophan that it's in the diet. What about the ninety percent? So the 90% degrade, metabolize in another pathway that it's called the kinerunin pathway. And the metabolites that create in that reaction, in that pathway, yeah. that metabolites can affect or protect your brain. Because depending of the situation of the body, it will, the route that this kinerunin pathway will take if we have uh, chronic diseases, stress, this pathway is going to take another course and the metabolites that we create by this pathway are going to attack and oxidize neurons and the microglia, and that is the macrophage of the brain, and a lot of uh, any more cells that have this, uh, that can work with this pathway. So the mission of that uh, pathway, that kinerunin pathway, is to deplete all the tryptophan 
it's a mechanism of it's a mechanism of defense. So, and they discover because of toxoplasmosis. So, if if we have toxoplasmosis, the body will deplete all the tryptophan. So, toxoplasma can eat tryptophan, so it will die. But another cells need tryptophan. So, what about if we have a chronic inflammation? There will not be tryptophan. So, there is a one just one thing that would that could happen if we don't have tryptophan because there are a lot of and in the gut we have another signal that creates the serotonin or the tryptophan that are, that is the microbiome the bacteria can create tryptophan another bacteria can create serotonin another bacteria can stimulate the enteroendocrine and enteroendocrine cells in the gut to create serotonin but what happened right now we are not feeding that bacteria. We are killing that bacteria. Glyphosate killed that bacteria. Glyphosate uh, decimate tryptophan. So we are uh, eliminating in the gut tryptophan in two ways. But one, by killing the bacteria that create tryptophan and killing the tryptophan that is on the diet. So there is a lot of stuff that we can assimilate in behavior with tryptophan and this Kainerununin way or pathway. It's so hard. If we, like I said to you before, it took me to like three months to understand this kind of reaction and the metabolites. Huntington disease, Alzheimer's, there's a lot of issues that are related with this pathway. Okay, so what you're saying is that uh, tryptophan can be uh, reduced in the gut by glyphosate, for example, and antibiotics mm -hmm. and what have you, because it 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 chelates, it's sticky, it, it it sticks to the tryptophan so you can't absorb it. Uh, and at the same time, the, the glyphosate, which is Roundup from Monsanto, thank you, Roundup. Monsanto, uh, <laughs> the, it kills the, the bacteria which tr produce the tryptophan. So just basically, if you're exposed to glyphosate, you are you have much less uh, tryptophan from the gut going to your brain. Tryptophan, by the way, is a is a is a, an amino acid which can poorly cross the blood brain barrier but when it does it can then make serotonin and in the brain what you're saying is that only five percent of that tryptophan goes to serotonin the rest is degraded as a protection for the brain is that about a, a summary of it a summary and a little percent of that serotonin that creates in the brain transforming to melatonin Melatonin. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Glyphosate. Glyphosate is a, it's an herbicide and it's used to kill weed. Yeah. Because it inhibits the shikimic uh, acid pathway. The shikimic yeah. acid pathway is a fundamental pathway that plants use to synthesize tryptophan, phenylalanine, and another amino acids. But uh -huh. they forgot or they skipped or they didn't realize that bacteria use that chikimic acid pathway too. So that's why this glyphosate is killing bacteria because they glyphosate it inhibit that chikimic acid pathway. So bacteria can create amino acids to live. Okay. You said uh, something acid pathway. Just tell me that so that I can put it on the screen so that we can all see what that you said ischemic past acid ischemic ischemic s h s h i s h i k s h i k i s h i k i m i k acid pathway have a look at this to see if that's right so that's yeah. right. Shikimi acid pathway. Yeah. Shikimi acid. Wow. From <laughs> shikimi mushrooms, where they found it. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Uh, uh, I, I think the shikimi is from the discover. It was uh, ah. a the, the guy who discovered that. It's the shikimi. In the, ah, yeah, Dr. Because, shikimi. Uh, uh, you know that the glyphosate, I think, was created in the middle of the seventies. And that was one by Monsanto, but now Bayer or oh, Bayer has the the patent of glyphosate. Yeah. And some yeah. countries are are banning, you know, glyphosate because uh, 
it it's it creates some kidney issues in people and and, and, and if we uh, comparate dogs between people dogs are uh, eliminating 50 times more glyphosate in urine than a human really and, why, why is yeah. that you you're a big one for on, on studying glyphosate as well i remember so just tell us about so dogs have got 50 times more glyphosate in their body so they eliminate 50 times more or 50 times more in urine because uh their food you know ah, ah. because most of cable is made of corn. Corn it's a transgenic field. So okay. transgenic it means that this corn can accept glyphosate without killing the corn. That's the that is the connection. Yeah. That is the connection. The the transgenic thing is that because glyphosate kills everything, but glyph uh, glyphosate cannot kill corn. So why? Because we modify the DNA of corn to accept the glyphosate without dying yes so glyphosate is in the corn so we can eat glyphosate because uh, we don't use as a mammal the chemical pathway but our bacteria does oh okay clever 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 okay and so uh all dogs eating kibble have much higher levels of glyphosate than the equivalent dog eating a raw food diet because there's less uh, is that right in fact, the people who live in farms eliminate more glyphosate than someone who lives in city. But okay. dogs eliminate yeah. more glyphosate because for the food they are eating. And and all this is started in Sri Lanka. There is a country that they create a, a they culture tea. So. Uh, many people there in Sri Lanka are suffering on a pandemic of kidney disease. And they started to find out why these people are dying of chronic diseases of the kidney. Uh -huh. And because they are drinking water yeah. with glyphosate. Okay. So it, let me finish. So they, they say, uh, okay, they are drinking hard water because this water from Sri Lanka is heavy with minerals it can affect the kidney so there is no reason to think that glyphosate is the guilty so there was a thing because in in the north of this city that are suffering from chronic disease that little town don't use glyphosate they don't use glyphosate and they are not having chronic diseases with the kidney <laughs> okay. yeah 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 so, so what, that's what, so what do we see in what do we actually see in dogs who who are, have very high levels of glyphosate? What would people be looking for in those glyphosate dogs? First of all, in in my experience, because I was trying to to teach about glyphosate, they don't care. They don't care. They they don't see. Yeah. It. And glyphosate okay affects the kidney, but it's it's an hormonal disruptor as well. So. We don't see the effects from one day to another. It's a chronic, just like okay. everything, because aflatoxin, it's chronic, and acrylamide, it's, a, and right. it's yeah. chronic, hetero, het, heterocyclic amines, it's, yeah. and, and all these, these picnic of elements are hormonal disruptors. So I think that is the, 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 the real situation. That is the, the, the thing that triggers all the cancer in dogs because it's a chronic thing and everything most of the chemical stuff that creates with the with the with the preparation of kibble uh, are hormonal disruptor it can affect uh, prostate and, and breast cancer so okay i think in the future maybe the cancer or the breast cancer or prostatic issues with dogs are not related with the, the nurturing. I think it's related more with the food. Wow. That's really, really big stuff. Um, where can, where can um, everybody go to find out more about dogs and glyphosate? Well, for example, uh, you can Google with the PDF and PathMed, you can work, we can search glyphosate, kibble, and you can find 
some papers about the relationship and the the quantities of uh, the of glyphosate versus uh, a human and unfortunately now we are eating glyphosate with beer with wine and and a lot of stuff even even water drink uh, the water that we drink it's positive with glyphosate yeah for sure everything has it in and and it's persistent yeah glyphosate i presume because or is it, or is it just <clears throat> they put it on every year and they use it to dry grain and all that stuff there's a, a lot of stuff with Glyphosate is the, the, the industry defend glyphosate because it's not the glyphosate itself. It's sometimes, for example, with the case of Sri Lanka with the water, it because glyphosate uh, act like a kind of binding minerals with magnesium. So uh -huh. this mineral that that bind with glyphosate and uh -huh. and go into to the body, yeah. that is the stuff that create the destruction of the kidney in humans gotcha gotcha kidney amazing okay that's that's amazing christian um <laughs> uh, i got you on to talk about uh raw food your experiences with raw food your experience of raw food in in south america and that's fantastic and and also to talk about the microbiome i not in a million years did i think we'd be talking about glyphosate bayer monsanto mineral chelation tryptophan uh, <laughs> i think so this has been a uh, an absolutely fantastic have you got any any final words that you would like to to share with your with your uh the the the, the english speaking audience or with your spanish speaking audience mm, uh, a good advice is never stop studying if you have doubt you have to look for the answer and don't stay with just one answer because maybe someone is giving you the wrong answer so uh, we are not perfect nutrition in dogs it's i think it's quite new science yes so in if you want to learn about more microbiome but well, for the spanish people uh, book in me an instagram i your dicto no curso online the microbioma and Maybe next year, my microbiome course, that online microbiome course, I will do it in English for in for the audience, you know, and, and it's so easy to uh, explain in an easy way because it's not a, a simple science. Okay, yeah. uh, probiotics, prebiotics, uh, short chain fatty acids, good for the immune system, good. That's not all. Why our immune system tolerate? the bacteria how because if i have salmonella i will get disease but i have some or, or how dogs have salmonella and some dogs can get ill by salmonella so how the uh, immune system tolerate the bacteria that's the big deal so this is the thing that we have to know first and after that we can talk about more how the prebiotics work probiotics uh, c-section uh, natural birth and um, baby milk formula etc so everything starts from the beginning from the birth so after that we can talk about i don't know how the microbiome works because so many stages of the the foundations of the microorganisms inside us so we can, we can talk about the gut brain axis right but now we are we can talk about the gut lung axis so we have now uh, another kind of microbiome in the lungs so associated yeah. with some with asthma you know um, polycystic diseases etc and and another thing that i'm going to study right now is periodontitis the, the stuff with bacteria and relationship mm -hmm. with the mouth and relationship with the heart disease so cool. Uh, cool. how bacteria interact with the immune system because it's, the inflammation is causing by the whole by the own body it's not the bacteria bacteria they say i'm here doing nothing they just destroy they destroy the um, the immune cells so this is that is food for the other bacteria and this is this is nutrients for the bacteria and they're creating a kind of 
barrier, and this is the biofilm that we have in in our teeth. And that is why it's so hard to treat it with antibiotics because antibiotics cannot penetrate that you know that barrier. So yeah. it's, it's a relationship between many many bacteria, and not just one. Yeah, yeah. So Amazing. many 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 many. Okay. Um, finally, Christian, you are translating. Connor's book into Spanish. This is absolutely amazing. When do you think you're going to be done? Mm, well, um, like I told you before, I have a little thing. Well, uh, uh, if the audience, you know, they don't know, but you know, I, I'm going to be a father, so I'm, I'm preparing the the room for the for the newborn. Yeah. And um, you know, I am constructing and. Um, finishing my second session of the microbiome course um, and preparing my my exposition my exposition to the to the this for this congress for the next sunday you know it, it's my second time in my life that i'm going to speak in another language it's so hard yeah. even when you have to to talk with uh, technical words you know the pathogens pathobionts etc yeah. Um, and I have three chapters already traduced, so I'm going to send them to my colleagues, Spanish colleagues, to see yeah. the, their presentation. And and I hope to be finished September, October, the book. September, October. Wow. I thought you were going to say about a year. So that's... No, no. I, I have to work uh, very hard because I think I will not have time when the baby <laughs> when the baby is born. So... I try to be more uh, visionary about that. <laughs> Watching okay. YouTube videos. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. Listen, it's been absolutely great. Thank you so much. Good luck with the book, by the way, and your your, you. course, your course on Sunday. I'm sure it will go really, really well. Thank you for coming and, and, and bringing um, some uh, South American and Chilean energy to our uh, wet Wednesday <laughs> evening here in the UK and you know, and, and that we've got Australians and we've got uh, people from all over Europe uh, joining us so thank you for bringing some some South American uh, energy to our evening we really really appreciate it thank you Christian good luck I look forward to seeing you at, at the next conference whether it's over here or over there uh, it will be good I'm sure I'm going to say good night to everybody and I'm going to say a very big thank you again to Christian. Thank you to everybody who's joined in. Uh, it's been some thank really you for the invitation, Nick. Good it's to see you again, my friend. It's great to see you, mate. Um, uh, so, so I'm going to say good night to everybody. Thank you very much. Next week, we have got Modi, Modi Lambert from Canine Raw Solutions. And she is the queen of tripe. So she's going to get tell us about her adventures with tripe and and some of her cases and um why she loves raw feeding so some 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 some, some real nitty-gritty with uh, Modi lambert next week so thank you very much guys take care of yourselves be good have fun and uh feed well and eat well yourselves be good thank you very much